Hello and welcome to Make It Heard. Tonight on Meet the Writer, we have Floyd Kennedy. Um, much more than a writer, she's a performer, she's a facilitator, you name it, she does it. Um, so without further ado, I introduce you to Floyd. Hi, Sharon. Thanks for having me on. I'm Floyd. That's Floyd with two L's. Floyd Kennedy, I realise that I have been having to spell my name every time I'm introduced to somebody for all of my life. And then finally, a couple of years ago, I, I thought, why don't I just call myself Floyd with two L's? It saves a lot of bother. So that's who I am. I'm an actor. I'm an actor, a director, a writer, singer-songwriter, performance poet, and I'm a voice accent and acting coach. I'm also a mother and a grandmother and I'm Australian but I live in lovely Liverpool. Thanks so much for inviting me on and for this opportunity to share my silly little podcast. How long I have been in the entertainment oh industry, I hate that word, uh, for as long as I can remember. I, I, I started, I apparently at the age of 18 months, my, I had an aunt who'd been in a car accident. She was laid up in hospital and she taught me the song, Anything You Can Do, I Can Do Better. And we were singing it apparently at the tops of our voices and the nurses had to come and shut us up. <laughs> and then when I was six, we moved to Townsville where another aunt lived and she ran a dancing school. So she had me in concerts doing song and dance. And once I was, once I was on stage, I just, I just knew that's where I wanted to live, basically. So that's what inspired me to start. And I've been doing it on and off ever since. A biggest career success, that's a kind of a weird one for me because I'm not rich and famous. I never wanted to be rich and famous. I just wanted to make work, tell stories, as you do. But I guess the thing that I'm most proud of, in a way, was the theatre company that I helped to set up when I lived in Scotland. We'd, it was a bunch of actors, techie people. We came together to experiment. And uh, we used a play, an Australian play called The Golden Age, beautiful play by Louis Nara. Um, and we, we just mucked about, workshopped it for a, a couple of months, and then we were invited to put it on at a local venue, nearby venue in Cumbernauld, Cumbernauld Theatre. And, uh, and we did, and it, was, it went down really well, and we knew we'd made something special. So we decided to set up a proper theatre company, and we ran for about five years, touring all around Scotland. We really did some lovely work. The thing that I loved about it most was that it was a true ensemble. From the word go, we, we, we set out our parameters that everybody who was involved would contribute whatever skill they had, whether it was, for example, we had an actor who made the most beautiful paper mache models. So he, he made some wonderful props for us. We had designers. We had, yeah. Uh, it, it it was it was always a work in progress um, and it was wonderful we had funding for on and off we had arts council funding for a couple of projects we we had you know local councils used to fund you back in those days and we also had the wonderful sue hillman doing all our admin and getting sponsorship for us she was excellent at, at getting sponsors she she approached a, a coffee distribution company in Cumbernauld at one stage and asked them if they'd like to buy an advert, and they said, no, we'll send you a coffee machine. So every year, every time we went into production, we would just contact them, and they would send the coffee machine and the full supply of coffee. So we were the theatre company that did great coffee. I'm not teaching any workshops uh at this moment, but I am about to launch, hopefully, uh, a new series of workshops in, in August. So I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here. But the idea is that it's going to be cohort 
based workshops. That's the new buzzword, in case you didn't know. Um, it just means workshops <laughs> with groups of people. But the idea with this is that I want to work with small groups of people intensively over like two sessions a week for three weeks, one and a half to two hours each. And we'll be going through the basics of looking after your voices and then clear speech, good communication skills, public speaking skills, confidence, techniques, good presentation skills, you know. Um, I will be using acting techniques because I find they work wonderfully well, you know, working with business people. You don't have to tell them their acting techniques, but they are. And they're, they're just about really being good sharers of whatever it is that you want to share. So if anybody's interested, I've got, I've got a form that you can fill in to uh, express your interest and just email me, floyd at floydkennedy.com. I teach pure voice, which is that looking after your voice. How does it sound? How is your pitch? How is your resonance? Can you speak here or here? You know, all of that stuff. And then we toss in clear speech, which is just whatever accent you've got, expressing yourself um, clearly so that people can understand you. I also teach accents if you want to learn a new accent different from the one you've got and everybody's got one in spite of the myth but no accent just the word means the way you pronounce the words that you speak that's your accent I also teach acting and I teach clown and I will teach singing to people who think they can't sing I'll just prove to them that they can and then I'll send them on to a proper singing teacher Advice that I give to people starting out in the business is first and foremost, do not think of it as a business. Any artist, any creative person, it's a way of life rather than a business. The business side of it are the specific business-related skills that you need in order to be able to do the work that you do, the create what you do. So you do need to know about marketing and and how to manage your finances. That's really important. But anybody wanting to get into the entertainment so-called industry is be prepared to for a very rough ride and be good. Enjoy working with other people. All of the performing arts, uh, they are collaborative forms of art. You can't do it on your own. doesn't matter what you're doing. You cannot do it on your own. Even if you're doing a one-person show, you need someone to manage the lighting uh, or to, you know, do the box office. Everybody who's involved in making the work available to, the, to an audience, you depend on each other. Respect. Respect each other. I started the podcast... Quite accidentally, it started out, I just, I was invited to write a 10-minute radio play for my friends at the Corner House Theatre in Surbiton. It's a little local community theatre down in South London, and um, they wanted to put some stuff on their website to entertain their local audience during lockdown. So I entered my a little 10-minute sketch, and the idea for the sketch came out of a a puzzlement that I have been having started sometime in lockdown with this thing of why am I not allowed to say I'm old? What's wrong with being old? I like being old. I'm enjoying being the age I am. I'm not young. I'm not middle-aged. What the heck am I if I'm not old? What's, you know, the word has come to just mean you're only allowed to use it if you mean decrepit, you know, falling apart, useless. Something is old, it's useless. But old things can be wonderful. So <laughs> that's how the idea for the for the podcast came on. I, it, it's an excuse for me to have a rant. I put all my things that I'm pissed off about into the mouth of this character who has even less of a filter than I do, and I love her. I discovered in the process of writing these things that 
I seem to be pretty good at writing dialogue. Um, I mean, let's face it, I've been doing it in my head all my life, making up, or oh, if only I'd said, you know, that kind of dialogue, or you think of the clever thing that you, you would have said, but you never think of it in the moment. Well, my mate Helen, she thinks of those clever things, and she just says them. So that's what I've discovered there. It, they seem to be amusing. I don't write them trying to be funny, but people are finding them funny, and I love that so much. Well, I suggested that you play half the podcast, well, up to episode six, which is a little bit beyond half. As a, a taster, you can have a good listen, and then if you like it, head on over to my website to click into the actual uh, podcast, you know, as, as they come out, you'll get, if you, if you um, use a pod, any podcasting software, I, I use Downcast, there's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, there, there's loads of them. And then if you're clicking over there, I get you registered as fresh downloads and my numbers go up and then maybe they'll jack me up the search engine a little bit further so that more people can find me. I'm sure you've heard the spiel on every podcast you've ever listened to. We need your reviews. We need reviews. We need downloads to get the numbers up so that we find more listeners. We're up to episode 10 at the moment. And episode 11 has been written. It's waiting to be recorded. Anyone that wants to contact me about the workshops or about getting one-on-one -on -one, uh, classes or just if you want to chat with me, you can contact me via my email address, which is Floyd, that's Floyd with two L's, floyd at floydkennedy.com. And I'll get back to you because I do that. Oh, and the website for the podcast is www.am-i-old-yet.com. In other words, am I old yet dot com, only with hyphens in between all the words. This is Make It Heard with Floyd Kennedy. Am I Old Yet? A series of short radio plays by Floyd Kennedy. Episode 1. Kind like Sharon. All right, all right, I'm coming. Hold your horses. Oh, shit, that hurt. <sighs> yes? Hello? Yes? Hello? Hello? Is that you, Helen? Who is this? Helen? Yes, my name is Helen. Who are you? What do you want? You don't sound like Helen. Helen there? What? This is Helen. Who are you? Why are you calling me? Oh, great. Thanks Mom, for nothing. Is that for me? No, sweetheart, just a crank call. One of those, you know, what do you call them these days? Meatloaf. Tin meatloaf. What are you talking about? Honestly, Mum, you're, you're getting worse by the minute. I know it's just words, odd words. Words get odder. Have you noticed that? Was it a scammer? And they hide from you. What did you tell them? Nothing. Scammer. Oh, spam. <laughs> I don't know. Did you give them your bank details? What? No, of course not. Why would I give them my bank details? Did you give them your bank details? What am I, an idiot? Yes? Hello? Oh, for goodness sake. Is that you, Helen? Yes, it is. And who are you? It's me, Helen. It's me. It's, is it really you? Yes, it's really me, Helen. And who are you? Why are you calling me? <laughs> it's just me, Helen. Why are you shouting at me? Who is it, Mom? <laughs> just my crank caller back again, Janie. Well, hang up. No, wait. I'm, I'm coming down. Don't do that. I can handle it. Now then, who did you say you were? It's, it, it, it's your sister. Don't you remember me? I remember you. Marion? Ma Marion? Really? But where are you? Uh, are you calling me from Rocky? Are you all right? What? Yes, I, I know it's a shock, Helen. You know I hate telephones. I, I, I just wanted to talk to you. Hello? Hello. 
Well, gosh, this is lovely. Who is it, Mum? It's your Aunt Marion. Really? Are you sure? I just wanted to hear your voice. You don't sound like you. Are you sure you're Helen Doherty? Yes, I'm perfectly sure. You sound like Marion. Actually, you sound more like Mum. Do I? I don't look like her. Oh, yes, you do. You always look like her. Let me talk to her, Mum, in a minute. Marion, where are you, darling? Are you at home? I think so. I'm in some kind of home. A home? Is it a nursing home? Well, there are sort of nurses, so I, I guess so. <sharp inhale> One of them found my phone to call you. Wasn't that sweet of her? She's just like you. So kind, so clever, really clever, just like you, not stupid like me. Oh, come on, Marion, don't go there. I'm not that clever and you are not that stupid. Well, I, I can hardly remember my own name, so I must be stupid. Why can't I remember my name when I want to? It shouldn't be that hard. I've been trying to think of it all day. The nice nurse lady keeps asking me, and then I thought, I know, I'll ask Helen. She's the clever one. She'll know what it is, and he did. Marion? Sweetheart, why didn't the nurse know your name? What nurse? The one who found your phone. Oh, she's not here. She went home for her tea. Her tea? What time is it there? What is it? What time is it in Rockhampton? I don't know. What? Ten hours ahead of us, isn't it? It's tea time. Eight plus ten is eighteen, so what, four o'clock? What about daylight saving? No, no, no. Eighteen hundred is six o'clock. Really, Mum? Six o'clock, fine. So I'm still no good at arithmetic. So that would be tea time. But if it's daylight saving? It would only be an hour different. What does it matter? It's good to get it right, Mum. Marion? Yes? Who is this, please? Oh, Lordy. What? What is it? What's wrong? You talk to her, please, and be nice. Hello, Aunt Marion. This is Janie, your niece. How are you? My niece? Oh, oh, yes. You must be Helen's daughter. How nice of you to call me. This is wonderful. I, I remember you when you were a tiny little girl. So pretty, so clever, just, just like your mother. How is she? Oh, she's fine. Thanks, Aunt Marion. Getting a bit doddery now, but... Hey, Marion, it's Helen here, darling. Your sister, Helen. Helen? Yes. Now, Marion, how are you? Are you all right? Are you well? Are you safe? Are they looking after you well? Why didn't you write? I haven't heard from you for months. Where's Wallace? Is Wallace nearby? Do you see Who him? Who is Wallace? Your son, Wallace? Oh, you mean Wally. Oh, yes, he's fine. He brings me chocolate. I'm so lucky. <laughs> oh, darling, don't cry. Yes, you are lucky. You did a good job there, raising a lovely, but, lovely but son. why am I in a home with a nurse? Did he bring me here? I don't know, darling. I, I guess he must have. Don't you remember oh, no. how you got there? I just remember they kept asking my name and I couldn't tell them, so they took my phone out of my bag and, and called your number and you told them my name, so now I can go home. Oh dear. What? What's up? She's totally lost the plot. She's in a home, she can't remember her own name, and you think I'm bad. But she's in a home, so she's being looked after. And I'm here to look after you. Oh, no, you're not. You're here to be in a bubble with me so that we each have someone to talk to. I do not need looking after. You need looking after more than I do. You don't eat properly. You don't sleep properly. And you keep bumping into things and forgetting words. No! No! Marion, what's up, sweetheart? Are you all right? Helen, are you still there? Helen, the nurse is here. She wants to take my phone away. No, no, it's mine. I'm talking to my sister. Marion. Marion, listen to me. Darling, please but, let me talk to the nurse. But it's my phone. Yes, but you can just lend it to her for a minute. She'll give it back to you. I promise. All right. Here. Hello. Who am I speaking to, please? It's Helen Doherty here. I'm Marion's sister. Oh, Miss Doherty, thank you for taking the call. 
Now, I, I'm sorry, but are you absolutely sure you are this lady's sister? Excuse me? Mum, who is it? The nurse at the home. Yes, she just phoned me. She sounds like my sister, she knows who I am, and she knows my daughter. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, we've been trying to find out who she is all day. All day? What's she doing in your nursing home if you don't know who she is? Oh, this isn't a nursing home, it's my home. Oh, my goodness. Your sister was sitting on my front fence crying, so I brought her inside and called the police. They've been here trying to find out who she is, checking for missing persons, and, and finally I found her phone. I, I just stepped into the kitchen to make some tea, and she must have called you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, look, that is so kind of you. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I, I don't know your name. It's Sharon. Well, Sharon, I, I, I just can't thank you enough. So kind. I had no idea she was in this state. Can you come and pick her up, please? I really don't have room for her to stay the night, and it, it's getting dark now. I, I'm afraid I can't. I'm in London. But you could call her son, Wallace Henry. He'll be in her contacts on her phone. Just a minute. What's happening? I'll explain it later. Just let me catch my breath here. Got it. He's down as a company number. Does he live nearby? As far as I know, he is still living in Rockhampton with his wife and children. Okay, I'll do that now. Thank you so much. Will you put Marion back on now, please? Of course. Take care. Oh, my goodness. Well, Helen, are you there, Helen? Yes, sweetheart, I'm here. Janie's here. And Wally will be over to pick you up shortly. I hope he's got chocolate. Oh, I'm sure he will. Now, you be sure to give him our love. And tell him to call me and to let me know how you're getting on. I don't need him to call you. I can do that for myself, can't I? Yes, you can. You surely can. Goodbye, big sister. We'll talk again soon. Take care. I've finished now. How do you turn this thing off? Just just leave it, dear. I'll fix it. Mum? Are you okay, Mum? What? Are you okay? Did you say something? What? Help! There's a strange woman in my house! Mom! Are you talking to me? Oh, you! Gotcha! You! <laughs> don't you ever do that to me again! Oh, you don't like it when Mummy loses her marbles? No. Well, let that be a lesson to you, young lady. I ain't lost them yet. Well, not all of them. And when the time comes, if it comes, please be kind. Kind like Sharon. Kind Like Sharon was written, performed, and produced by Floyd Kennedy. Speaking as a not young person, a short play for radio. Okay, I'm awake. Oh God, what day is it? What did I do yesterday? Yesterday was Saturday? No. <gasps> yes. Yes, it was. It was... So it's Sunday. All right. All right, that's it. I'm getting up, 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 up to the bathroom. Mom? Are you up yet? <sighs> Mom? Yes? Can I ask you something, Mom? What? Can't you wait till I come down? Oh, hang on, just let me get my teeth in. What now? Are you all right, Mum? Oh, here we go. Yes, darling, I'm absolutely fine. How are you? Are you all right? What is it, sweetheart? Tell Mummy all about it. I'm sure we can fix it, whatever it is. Don't do that. What? Talk to me as if I were a child. But you are a child, my sweet one. You are my child, my baby girl, my own oh, sweet... Stop it. <laughs> Tell you what, let's make a deal, shall we? You stop treating me like an invalid and I shall stop treating you like a child. We are both grown-ups, are we not? Well, I, I know I am, but I'm never sure about you. And that's exactly as it should be. Now, do I have time to make a cuppa, get myself properly woken up, or is this something urgent that we must deal with straight away before the police arrive? Police? What are you... Oh, there you go again. Well, 
Well, what? Shall we have this discussion here on the stairs? In which case, move down one so that I can sit down. Or can we carry on down to the kitchen and I will put the kettle on and you can pour your heart out while it boils. By the time the tea is made, I may be compromentous enough to pretend I have an answer for you. <sighs> kitchen then. Good girl. Good grown-up girl. Tea or coffee? Tea, please. Sit. Speak. Speak, Janie. I can put tea bags into mugs and listen at the same time, you know. Please don't be sarcastic. I wasn't. I was speaking the truth. It's a fact. Well, don't be angry. Janie, if you will be annoying, I will get angry. Fact. So stop faffing around being annoying and tell me what's up. All right. Jonathan is coming home. Yes? He's coming back to London. Yes, I assume that's what you meant, since this is where his home is. But don't you see? See what? Janie, your husband is returning home from his business trip. What is to see? Wasn't he due back around now? Oh, has he cut his trip short because of the pandemic? Oh, is he going to be allowed back in? Is that the problem? No, no, no he can come in, but... He'll have to quarantine himself for two weeks. Yes, I understand that. Quite right, too. And? But don't you see? If I go home to look after him, you'll be on your own. And, and I'll be in the bubble with him, and I, I won't be able to see you. Yes, and the problem is? Well, it's obvious. How will you manage? Are you kidding me? How will I manage? Janie... You've been staying with me for a month. How did I manage before you came here? But, Mum... No. There is no but, Mum, about it. I manage. I always manage. I have been managing all my life. Yes, but now you're... You're... Well, you're... Yes, darling? Well, you're... I'm... What? What am I? It's all right, you know. You can say it. You're getting on. Getting on. Is that what it's called? Getting on. So, hang on a minute. I'm getting on. So what about you? What do you mean? Well, would you say you were young? Not exactly. And what is one if one is not exactly something? Surely that implies you must be exactly something else, no? Mm, Middle-aged. Pardon? I'm middle-aged. Oh. oh, that was brave. Well done. Now then. Am I young? No. Am I middle-aged? Not exactly. And what comes after not exactly middle-aged? But you're not old, Mum. You're not. You're just not. Oh, Lordy. What's that? It's your phone. Certainly not mine. What's the matter with you? Hello? Who is this, please? Who is it? Just a minute. It's me, Mum. <laughs> your only daughter. Didn't my name come up on your phone? Oh, I, I never look at it. Darling, how are you? Are you all right? What do you want? What do I want? I want to talk to you. Is that a crime? Of course not. That, that's not what I meant. I, what do you want to talk to me about? Oh, nothing in particular. I just wanted to say hi. How are you? Let me speak to her. Who? Susie. How do you know it's Susie? Just let me speak to her. <sighs> Hi, Susie. Oh, hi, Gran. How are you? Absolutely dandy, thank you, darling. How are you? Oh, pretty dandy too, I guess. Although, as a young person, that's not a term I'm accustomed to. Oh, no, not you too. What? Not me too, what? As a young person? What is that about? Should I be saying, as an old person, whenever something comes up that I was hitherto unaware of? not. You're not an old person. And I don't expect you to keep up with every new thing that comes along. Just as well. Because there's only so much room in my brain for stuff to know about. And it's pretty full up right now. Overflowing, in fact. But you can't call yourself an old person because you're not. No, she's not. Then I repeat the question I just asked your mother. If I'm not young and I'm not middle-aged... And I'm not old. What am I? Do I exist? Oh, now there's a thought. Maybe I'm a figment of my own imagination. 
Well, that's just silly. Wow, grand. That is extra. Extra what? Well, just extra. Haven't you heard that? Hey, I get to give you a new word for a change. It means, um, oh, over the top. Oh, you mean far out. Oh, probably. But that's what I mean. You, you, you don't talk like an old person. You don't act like an old person, so you can't be. But don't you see, darling? That leaves me nowhere, no when. And where is the law that says old people can only talk and act one way? I know people younger than me who sit around moaning about how things aren't what they used to be. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I said. But that just means the word old has nothing to do with age. So there is no word to describe the age I am. Don't you see? I just want to claim the word back, like gay people claim the word queer. Oh, oh, you're right. Oh, I see what you mean. So old doesn't have to mean... Decrepit. It doesn't have to mean at death's door. It just means I'm in a certain age range. Like you are young, but not very young. Your mother is middle-aged. Oh, she won't like that. I hate that. Well, I don't have a problem being old. I'm my kind of old. I'm not very old. I'm old enough. I am ageing. Yes, disgracefully. And proud of it. I am experiencing declining faculties in every direction, but that doesn't mean I'm helpless and need to be looked after or managed. Of course not. Whoever said you did? You don't want to know. I'm finished. I want to talk to my daughter. Bye, sweetie. I'll put your mother back on. You stay safe, OK? Oh, sure, Gran. You it's too. It's me, darling. So how are you getting on? I'm going to take a shower. I expect breakfast. That was Speaking as a Not Young Person. Helen was performed by Googie Blethers, Janie by Glynis Toms, and Susie by Diane Siliento. The music was by Joan Melton. This was a Radio Shorts production. Hello and welcome to Am I Old Yet? A series of short radio plays. Episode 3, Flowers for the Birthday Girl. Good. I should do it. Now, do not hit send, Helen. Oh, glad I remembered that. Okay, coffee, toast, mm, maybe. Give it time to simmer. Give me time to simmer down. Oh, Lordy, I'm doing it again. Not just talking to myself, but answering back. <sighs> yes. Yes, I'm coming. Yes, I'm on my way. Goodness sake, where are my keys? Oh, in the door. Okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hey, hang on. Wait. All right, don't then. Oh, wow. Oh, they're beautiful. Now, who is sending me flowers? No card. Odd. Oh, well, never mind. I'll find out soon enough. Hi, honey. It's you. Hi, Mum. How are you? Darling, I feel wonderful. Did you send me flowers? No. Thank you so much. They are absolutely gorgeous. Why are you sending me flowers? It's not my birthday, is it? No, no, that's next week. Oh, you got the date mixed up. No, no, Mum. I didn't send you flowers. What are you talking about? You know when your own birthday is, don't you? Of course I do. I was just testing you. Well, who sent them? I have no idea. Sure. Of course I'm sure, Mum. Who delivered them? Isn't there a card? No, no card. 
and the chap who delivered them dumped them at the door and ran away. Ran away? Oh, Mum, don't touch them. It, it might be something dangerous, you know. Don't be silly, darling. They're flowers. Beautiful, smelly flowers. What if they're poisoned or something? Why would anyone want to poison me? Honestly, Janie, you have such a suspicious mind. Why can't somebody just send me a lovely bunch of flowers without you thinking something terrible is going on? I'm just... No, I'm not going to let you spoil it for me. Let me have a few minutes to dream I have a secret admirer before I try to track down the florist. I needed something beautiful to happen this morning, and it has. Why? Why what? Why did you need something beautiful to happen? Are you feeling sad? Mad, not sad. I'm very angry. Again? Yes, again. Did you hear that program on the radio this morning about education and universities? No. Why not? Why not what? Why weren't you listening to the radio this morning? What were you doing? I was just, I don't know, having breakfast, talking to John, checking my email. But don't you listen to the news? Of course not. What? How do you keep up with what's going on? You tell me what's going on. I don't need the radio as well. It's too depressing. Well, you're not wrong there. I am raging. They had these young people on talking about their education and how they didn't think it was good enough and how... Wait, oh, wait a minute. I started to write to the BBC. Let me read it to you. You can tell me if I go too far. You always go too far. What was that? Just a minute. I've got, I've got it here on the screen. Oh, here, listen to this. Dear Radio 4, listening to your program this morning, I was delighted to hear some articulate, charming young people expressing their ideas about education, informed by their experience of life so far. There now, that was a good start, hey? Very positive. Then it goes on. Constructive suggestions were called for, and obviously the responses came from the knowledge, the experience they have of the world. Mine, of course, comes from a much longer time spent in the world, and a history that involved a different kind of parenting, a different form of education, and a very different labour market. Mom. Education. How the meaning of that word has changed in my lifetime. The schooling I received was designed to equip me for a useful life, not for a specific job. We learned how language was constructed so that we would be articulate. We learned how to manage numbers and shapes so that we would be able to function in a world of things, not an internet of things. Hey, Janie. That's pretty good, isn't it? Mom. We learnt how our ancestors had behaved so that we would learn from their mistakes as well as from the glories that were in those days to be admired and emulated. Oh, no, Mom. Oh, wait for it. We were encouraged to be curious and to challenge, albeit in a very mild way, some of the ideas and stories we were told. Gradually, over time, along with many more of my generation, we challenged the idea that those glories were anything but admirably achieved. And so we have learned over the years to be much, much more critical of things like empire, colonialism, history, dead white men. Mom, no. Please tell me you haven't said that yet. Why? What's wrong with it? I, I think it's very reasonable, not, not ranty at all for me. For you? Oh, Mum, please, no, you haven't, have you? No. No, actually, I haven't. I thought I'd have my breakfast and let it stew for a while, just to be on the safe side. Haven't had your breakfast yet? It's half past eleven. Well, I was just too angry, and I, I wanted to write it all down before I forgot what I wanted to say. It's always better to catch the moment, get it down, and then maybe edit. Isn't that what they taught you at university? Certainly worked for me. Yes, I'm sure it did. But you weren't writing angry, ranting letters then, were you? Actually, I was. I only went to university because I was angry about something and I wanted to put it right. Why did you? I don't think I ever asked you. Oh. <laughs> oh, because everybody did. It seemed to be the thing to do. I mean, I, I wanted to do what was normal. I just never questioned it. Actually... Now I think about it, you didn't ask me, it's true. 
But I never even asked myself. Isn't that odd? Oh, I think it's probably normal for your generation. You're right. Everybody around you was doing it. Why shouldn't you? But, Janie... Yes? Was it worth it for you? Was it worth it? Don't answer straight away, darling. Have a think about it. Actually, yes. I loved the reading. Being allowed to read and read and then write about what I'd been reading and then read some more. Gosh, I haven't thought about this for ages. I know the others thought I was weird because I wasn't a great party girl, but I loved the permission to read all those wonderful old books. Wonderful. And of course, I met John. And of course, you met John. What does that mean? What? That tone of voice. I thought you liked John. I do. I love him to bits. Well, why that tone of voice? Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I, I didn't mean anything in particular. It, it, it's just... Yes? Well... Yes? Well, you kind of stopped when you met John. Yes? It seemed as though you... Oh, my goodness, is that the time? I've got a Zoom call coming in soon, and I, I just have to grab a cup of, a cup of coffee and, and, and something to eat. Mum, you cannot leave it at that. What do you mean? I kind of stopped. Well, look, I know. I'll call you back after the meeting. We can have a lovely long chat. We could even Zoom if you like. I'd like to see you. You can show me the new sofa. Mum, I'm not going anywhere until you tell me what you meant. Oh, dear. I kind of stopped. Stopped what? Me and my big mouth. I'm so sorry, darling. Don't darling me. What do you mean? I just meant you settled. You just settled for John and nothing else. You didn't write. You even stopped reading. Really reading. All those magazines, they, they just don't count. You know what I mean? It's not a criticism, sweetheart. It's just an observation. Good. I am glad to hear that you are so observant. And you're right. I did stop whatever I was doing when I met John because I wanted to. Understand? I wanted to settle down, to be a housewife, to make a home, support my husband. I wanted to do it. My choice. Old-fashioned, I know, and I don't care. And he never questioned my choice. Understand? Yes. Oh, yes, I, I do understand. I'm so sorry. Don't be sorry, Mummy. You observe the true facts of the matter. End of story. Yes, yes, of course. It's, I'm, s oh, I shouldn't have said anything. No excuse. I'm so stupid I could kick myself. I, I do not want to upset you. The older I get, the looser my mouth gets. I'm not at all upset. And don't you dare start that again about being old. Oh, older. Oh, hang on. Bye, Mum. Someone at the door. Yes? Oh, hello, Jennifer. Hello, Mrs. Doherty. So sorry to bother you. Just wondering, did you notice a florist delivery at all this morning? We were expecting them to come in time for Nana's birthday lunch, and the florist said they'd been delivered already. Oh, my lord, yes, they came here. Oh, I'm so sorry. I never stopped to think they might not be for me. What am I like? Hold on. I'm afraid that papers are a wee bit bent. There's no card. Oh, don't worry. We've got the card separately. Thanks so much. Don't worry about the paper. Oh, I'm sorry we can't invite you in for lunch. Government guidance, you know. Yes, of course. We must be safe. So it's a birthday. How old? A hundred and two. Wow. Just wow. So precious, eh? Please give her my best. I shall. Thanks. Oh, and Jennifer. Yes? Will you ask her a question for me? Sure. I'd really like to know the answer. Ask her. Does she think she's old yet? That was... 
Flowers for the Birthday Girl. Episode 3 of Am I Old Yet? Written, performed and recorded by Floyd Kennedy. The music is by Joan Melton. Hello, this is Am I Old Yet? A series of short radio plays by Floyd Kennedy. I'm Floyd Kennedy, by the way. I hope you enjoy this next episode in the rather chaotic life of Helen Doherty. This episode is called Finish the Book. Alexa, what are my reminders for today? Here is your upcoming reminder. Finish the book. Finish the book? Which book? I'm reading three books. I don't need to finish them yet, do I? Did someone else ask me to read a book? Did I buy a new book recently? Oh, Lordy, stop. Just stop. Panicking does not help. Right then. Why am I sitting here wondering what I'm supposed to be doing? What was I doing before? Oh, I was in the kitchen. Okay, there's the kettle. Yes? Oh, hold on, I'm on my way. Hello, Jennifer. Hello, Mrs. Doherty. Helen, please. Oh, yes, Helen. Sorry to bother you. Oh, it's no bother. It's lovely to see you. How are you? Have you had the vaccination yet? Yes. Last week, thanks. I'm fine. I was lucky. No reaction at all. Oh, that's good. How's Nana? Oh, that's what I wanted to say. Remember, you wanted to ask her a question, you know, on her, on her birthday. Oh, yes, did I? Oh, oh, that question. Oh, goodness, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope she wasn't offended. Not at all. She laughed. Really? Yes. She laughed so much like we haven't heard a laugh like that for years. Oh, well... Good, I think. Do you know why? Well, not really. And the thing is, she wouldn't say. Oh, so she didn't give you an answer for me? No, she just asked me to give you this. <gasps> oh, oh, how very kind of her. It's, it's just lovely. She said you would know what it means. Really? I need to have a think about it. Although... I better get back. Harry's making lunch. See you later. Oh my, where are you, phone? Oh, oh. hello? Gran? Is that oh, you? Oh, Susie, yes, it, it's me. Why do you ask? Didn't you mean to phone me? Yes, of course. Oh, lovely, thank you. Why? For phoning you. Absolutely. I know how busy you are. And I just want you to know how much I appreciate that you think of me. Oh, don't be daft, Gran. Of course I think of you. Especially now. What? Now? Now why? Because I'm a poor, lonely, helpless old woman who... <laughs> I don't think so. You aren't any of those things, are Or are you? Uh, are you lonely, Gran? Nope. Can't say I am. Forgot how to do that many, many years ago, if I ever knew. What do you mean? I mean, when I was a child, I was on my own. I played on my own. Couldn't figure out how to join in with the other kids. I wanted to, but I didn't know how. To be honest, now I think about it, I didn't want to do the things that they were doing. Running around screaming? What's that about? Sitting around bitching about anyone who isn't sitting around bitching with you? I just don't get it. Nor me. So I got on with my own stuff, making things, making up stories in my head. What? 
What did you say? I said, nor me. I don't get the whole groupy thing. Hanging out with a gang, it bores me silly. But you have lots of friends, don't you? I thought you were a genuine party girl. Oh, I'm a good faker, Gran. I role-play it so that they don't pester me too much. Me too. I don't want to be too weird, but I, I know I am. Gosh, you're really good at it. I would never have guessed. I'll take that as a compliment. But don't tell Mum. She longs for me to be a party girl. <laughs> Even though she isn't. <laughs> because she isn't? Now that is weird. But we love her. Too right we do. So, why are you calling me now, today, in particular? Come on, Susie, what's I, going on? I wanted to run something by you. It's a project I'm working on for a history assignment. History? I thought you were doing politics. Well, I am. It's just... But it's not just modern-day politics. We have to look back at how things were to see if we can figure out how we got to here. Oh, now that I approve of. So, what's your idea? It's something I've been thinking about with the pandemic situation and, and how young people, oh, sorry, people my age in particular seem to believe they're being horribly deprived of their human rights by not being allowed to hang out in groups and how they're missing the music gigs, thousands of people gathering and doing nothing but jumping up and down and singing da di da di da whatever. Oh, sorry. I get a bit carried away. You go, girl. <laughs> anyway, I started wondering when this came to be such a thing that it is now embedded into the culture as if it had been like this forever. But it hasn't. It's very recent. If you look back a hundred years, apart from the aristocracy, most people were too busy working and, and looking after their own children every single day of the year. Or 200 years ago, when they were making their own clothes as well, and, and 300 years, they, they would have been growing their own food. Wow! You really have been thinking about this. And they would have been making their own entertainment with their families, maybe close friends. Oh, maybe with members of the local community, the village, yes, you know? Yes, but it was local, and, and, and everybody knew each other. Am I on to something here, Gran? I think you're spot on, sweetheart. You might need to double-check the date, but... Oh, and be careful not to oversimplify it. But I think you've touched on something vital. We've all been forced to stop and consider how we socialise. Well, some of us have. But nobody that I've heard so far has made the point that it's a very recent phenomenon, especially the festivals, hanging out in huge crowds with nothing to do but indulge yourself for days on end. Oh, Thank you, Gran. Apart from the Greeks. I knew you would make sense of my daft ideas. What do you mean, daft ideas? Who told you that? Jack. He wasn't being mean. He just thought it might make other people think I was daft for... Oh, critiquing the way things are. Jack? Do I know this, Jack? Not yet, Gran. But you will, all in good time. One step at a time. Oh, okay. Here I go, gently backing off until... You are ready to take me to the next level of knowing Jack. Good girl. Have you run this idea past your tutor yet? Not yet. I wanted to try you first. Well, darling, I am honoured and delighted. I can't begin to tell you how much. I think it's a great idea to pursue. And Susie... Yes? As you do your research... Be on the lookout for anything that might disprove your ideas. That makes you go deeper. Sure thing, Gran. Now, Gran, I have a question for you. Hit me with it. What's up? You sounded upset when you answered the phone. Did I? Yes. Ah, yes. Well, that wasn't upsetness. It was more a, a kind of joy. Shock, but in a good way. Tell me more. You know my neighbours across the corridor, Jennifer and Harry, and, and Jennifer's grandmother, Nana? Sure. Well, it was Nana's 102nd birthday last week. What? I know. And they ordered a huge bouquet of flowers for her, and the florist dumped them on my doorstep, so I thought they were for me. But Jennifer asked if I'd seen them, and I said yes, and I handed them over, and I wished Nana a happy birthday, and then... I, uh... Yes, Gran? You what? 
I asked them to ask her if she thinks she is old yet. Oh, my. I know. Me and my big mouth. But the thing is, apparently, Nana just laughed and laughed at it, and she wouldn't give them an answer. But she sent me a gift, a flower from the bouquet. One single, perfectly formed pink rosebud. And she said that I would know what it meant. Oh, how lovely. And do you? Well, I haven't had much time to think about it, but I think maybe I do. I think it means two things. One, who gives a stuff? Life is amazing. It starts, it grows, it changes as it grows, and then it dies. And two, it always had within it the dyingness. So, for all of its life, it was always old. Hmm. Too obvious? Not obvious enough? Deep. Too deep? <laughs> Just about deep enough, Gran. I guess we're both onto something, no? I'll take that. Me too. Thanks, Gran. Love you. Love you back. Oh! Oh! I just remembered. I know what book I have to finish. What? I've remembered what book I have to finish. The one I'm writing. Bye, darling. Gran? Yes, love? You are one weird dude. Takes one to know one. That was episode four in Am I Old Yet? A comedy about aging joyfully, or at least attempting to. It was written, performed, recorded and produced by Floyd Kennedy. Hello, welcome to Am I Old Yet? A series of short radio plays by Floyd Kennedy. Today's episode is called Caught Out. Busy, busy. Oh, Janie. All right. Oh, call back. Oh, still busy. Oh, well, worth a try. I know. Fresh cuppa. I was just trying to call you. I've been trying to call you for the past five Me minutes. Me too. Oh, well, that explains it. Explains what? Why your phone was always engaged. Oh, I, I see what you mean. So, so why, why are you are calling, you calling me? me? <laughs> you go. No, you go. Okay. I wanted to say, how are you? How's John? How's the garden? Oh, we're all fine. How are you? Is that why you're phoning me? Mm, yes and no. So why, Janie? Susie says you're writing a book. I didn't know you were writing a book. What's it about? What kind of a book? Oh, not writing. Editing. Did I say writing? <gasps> Silly me. Oh. I probably did. But I meant to say editing a book, as in what I do for a living. Oh. Yes, I'm editing a book on floral arrangements. Delightful. I am learning so much. And I don't even have to buy the book to learn it all. All I really need is some flowers to arrange so that I can put all that new knowledge into practice. Well, I can help you with that. I'll order some for you. Don't you have flowers in the garden? Not a lot. Just daffodils, plenty of those. But it might be a bit boring. What can you do with daffodils other than plonk them in a vase with some water? True. And they are gorgeous, just like that. So I'll, I'll order you some flowers, and you can play with them to your heart's content. Janie, that is so sweet of you. I would love that. Is that all? Mm. Yes, I was... I was just curious. Are you sure you're not... No, definitely not. Nothing to write about. Oh, is that the time? Gotta see a man about a dog. Mom, we are still under lockdown rules. You cannot meet up with strangers. Of course not. Just a figure of speech, darling. I have something to do now. Can't wait. Thanks for calling. Bye-bye. 
Oh, good, me and my mouth. Oh, well, come on back to work. But coffee first. Oh, what now? What the? Oh, wow. Hello? Georgie? Georgina? Yes, it's me, Annie Helen. I hope this isn't a bad time for you. Should I call back? I tried to check the time zone, but maybe I've got it wrong. Oh, not at all, Georgie. It's about 9am here. What time have you got? Where are you? It's 7pm uh, here. I'm in Sydney. Oh, lucky you. Well, are you lucky to be there? Do you like it? Oh, I love it to bits. I've got a great new job, really nice flat, and a bloke. What more could one want? <laughs> Not sure I know. <laughs> I thought you were doing well in your old job. I was. Just fancy to change. And the bloke? How long has this been going on? Oh, about 10 years. Same one as the last time we met, when you were in Brisbane. <laughs> oh, yes. Nice bloke. I still approve. How's everybody else? Well, that's partly why I'm calling. Uh, it's about Nan. Oh, no. Oh, oh, don't worry. It's not bad. It's not really bad. It's just that she fell over in the garden yesterday oh. and she's in hospital just to be checked over. They don't think she broke anything, but Dad asked me to let you know. Okay. Well, that's very kind. Thank you. And thank you, Dad, for me too. How's Marion coping? Much better than we thought. She's quite enjoying all the attention. Not in any pain, but just a bit unsteady on her feet. So they're running tests. Oh, that's good. Good yes. to be on the safe side. How are you? Are you well? You're in uh, lockdown again, aren't you? How do you cope with that? It must be awful. I'm fine. I just stayed in lockdown, never bothered to come out of it. Seemed like the sensible way to behave. Wow. That's amazing. What's that? A year in lockdown? You must be absolutely desperate for it to end. No, I'm desperate for the pandemic to end. And that's not going to happen as long as people keep breaking out of lockdown and refusing to have the vaccine. You think? Pretty sure. According to everything we know about how pandemics work and how COVID-19 works, Seems obvious to me. Ben, how do, how do you manage? Aren't you climbing the walls? Yes, great view from the top of the walls. <laughs> <laughs> Only kidding, Georgie. I keep busy. I do stuff. You must have heard about me. I'm the sister who does stuff. Uh, to be honest, Honey Helen, yes, I've heard that mentioned a few hundred times a year. Which reminds me. Oh, yes, you said there was another reason for this call. Yes, this is a bit sensitive. Not sure where to begin. Ah, spit it out, honey. Better out than in. Yes. All right, then. It's my new job with Wilkinson Balliol Publishing. <gasps> oh, and in what capacity? What's the job? Editorial assistant to uh, Joanna Wilkinson. Oh, Joanna Wilkinson. <laughs> yes. And she wants to know when she can expect the first draft of your new book. Oh, no. I'm oh, sorry, Annie Helen. If it's any consolation, she doesn't know we're related yet. Oh, don't you dare tell her. I won't. But you know what the publishing world is like. Very hard to keep a secret. And it would be so much simpler if you would just send her the draft. Have you finished it yet? Not really. Halfway? A quarter? <laughs> Have you started it? Oh, please. Please tell me you've started it. tried. I really have, Georgina. I have tried and tried, but I just, I just can't do it. Why not? You've loads of stuff to write about. As you say, you do stuff. You've had so many careers in so many countries. 
over so many years. Well, that's a gross exaggeration, Georgie, and you know it. I've had a moderately interesting life so far, but it hasn't been exceptional. I'm not famous. I haven't won anything. I worked as a secretary, got promoted to editor, so I've edited a few mildly well-known authors in my time, and I've written some poetry. That's about it. I don't write about myself. I, I write about gardens. I do not do memoir. I have no idea why Joanna thinks I could, let alone should. Because she does. And I trust her judgment. And you agreed I, to do it. No, 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 not really. I just told her to give me some time. And she did two years, honey, Helen. And she's under the impression that you've been working hard at it. And it's only because of the pandemic that she's been holding a fire. She's a very impatient person. I'm impressed at how patient she's been with you. Aha. Uh -huh. Now I see how you got the job. What do you mean? Because you're good at it. Yes, I am. And if Joanna wants your memoir, I'm going to make sure she gets it. But I don't want to do it. Marty Helen, you don't think you want to do it, but once you get started, you're going to enjoy it. I am? I can guarantee it. You can say what you like. You can rant all your rants. You can throw the odd poem in. It'll be great. I can? I thought I had to write a proper memoir like Clive James or, oh, I don't know, someone who writes memoirs. No, Auntie Helen, you don't have to write like anyone else, just like yourself. That's what Joanna wants to pay you for. Really? Really. But she's not going to send you the advance until she gets the first draft. That's the deal. I've seen it in writing with your signature on it. So no more excuses, just do it. Gosh, you're a tough cookie. I know, and it takes one to know one. And I'm tasty too. <laughs> <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> oh, all right. I'll have another go at it. When I've finished editing this book on floral arrangements. Why don't you start right there? Write about editing a book on floral arrangements. That will make you think of something else. So you write about that and so on. Oh. Well, I never would have thought of that. Georgie, you are a genius. I know. Okay, I'll leave you to it and I'll call you again in a week's time. A week? Oh, sh shoot. Okay, all right. I'm hyperventilating here, you know. <laughs> I think I'll give Jamie a call now. Haven't spoken to her in... Hey. Oh no! Oh please, Georgie, please don't tell her about the book. Ah, I knew it. You haven't told her. Well, let me put it this way. If you hit 5,000 words in a week, send them to me. And I won't call Jamie till then. Get it? Got it. Good. Take care, Annie Helen. Bye, Georgie. <laughs> But a fresh cup of coffee, I can do that, can't I? That was Caught Out, episode five of Am I Old Yet? by Floyd Kennedy. The part of Georgina was played by Alana Noyes and all the rest by me, Floyd Kennedy. The music is by Joan Melton. Hello, welcome to Am I Old Yet? A series of short radio plays by Floyd Kennedy. Episode 6, Saving Grounds. Helen, are, are you all right? What's happened? Oh, I'm fine. I'm so sorry to worry you. I, I was just having a stupid old woman turn in the kitchen. Oh, well, as long as you're all right, I was just coming over to see you and I, and I heard the scream. <laughs> 
And, well, no harm done, eh? <laughs> Just my ego a bit bruised. So what did you want to see me about? Is everything okay? Oh, yes, really good. So, Nana wants to have morning tea in the garden and she wants to know if you'd like to join us because we're allowed to. Oh, that's great. I'd love to. What time? Well, now, if you're free, it'll only take us about... Ten minutes to get her down there. Do you mind bringing your own tea? Or coffee? Or would that be tempting fate? Oh, you know me so well. I'll see you down there with something. OK. Cheery bye for now. Yes? It's me, Mum. How are you? Fine. Thanks, Janie. How are you? I'm fine, too. And? And what? Why you call me again? Didn't we speak, what, two hours ago? What do you want? Well, really, Mum, can't I just call up to see if you're all right? Of course you can. And I am still all right. Thank you for asking. Anything new and exciting happening? What? What sort of a question is that? What sort of new and exciting do you think could have happened to me in the past two hours? Well, something new and exciting has happened to me, and I wanted to tell you straight away. Oh, well, well, that's different. What is it? I'm all agog. So you should be. Now, you won't believe it. I've had an email from Cousin Georgina in Australia. Cousin Georgina? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, that is exciting. She wants us to meet up on Zoom in a week or two. A week or two, you say? Oh, sh shiver me scrumpets. That's great. Isn't it just? We haven't spoken since forever. It'll be so lovely to catch up with her. Yes, of course it will. That's great. Just great. In a, a week or two, you say? Well, oh, look, give her my love when you do. Oh, and don't forget to ask about your Aunt Marion. So? Is that it? Yes, that's my big news. Lovely. Well, thanks for sharing. Bye, darling. Talk soon. And I'll see you on Friday for lunch. Bye. There she is. Yes, here I am. Sorry I took so long. Had a phone call as I was leaving, so then I had to zap my cuppa. Tea or coffee? Tea this time. As you said, didn't want to tempt fate. So, how are you, Mrs. Hoffman? Please call me Madeline. I'm extremely well. Thank you. And you? Likewise, extremely well. But you had an accident this morning, no? Did you hurt yourself? Yes, I had what used to be called a senior moment. Oh, but now it's a stupid old woman moment, Jenny told me. Come, sit here by me. Six feet by me. <laughs> Good. I want to know what's going on with you. Are you sure you're all right? Are your family looking after you? They're trying to, Madeline. It's most annoying. Ah, uh, yes, that happens too. But you're a strong person, so... Why did you want to think... To know if I think I am old yet? Oh, straight for the jugular as ever, Madeline. Well, oh, let me explain, if I can. It's, it's the word old that's bugging me because it seems to bug everyone else if I use it. As if old has to mean only negative things like out of date or useless. Or At death's door, yes. I know what you mean. Whereas it's, it's also an age range without fixed numbers like any other age range. You've got it. Now, if young people can go around saying, as a young person, 
as an excuse for their ignorance, why can't I say, as an old person, as an excuse for my <laughs> whatever I need an excuse for? Oh, yes, of course. We all need an excuse now and then. But tell me, Helen, when you had your senior moment this morning, did you feel old or stupid? Well, it was pretty stupid. I was making coffee with the pot on the stove and I was so carefully watching it and I put the tea strainer by the side of the cooker so it was handy when the coffee bubbled up and I turned off the gas and carefully picked up the pot because the handle was quite warm and then I picked up the strainer and I held it over the sink while I poured the coffee through it, thus saving the grounds while the coffee ran down the plug hole. I call that pretty stupid. Indeed, I agree. Thank you. But why stupid old woman? Did you never do anything like that when you were a young woman? When you were a child? Hmm. Ah, oh, I, I see what you mean. You're absolutely right. I have been doing stupid things all my life. And what did you call yourself then? Did you say to yourself, Oh, you stupid child! Or, Oh, you stupid young woman! What did you say? Jenny, what was it Harry said yesterday when he couldn't remember where he left his glasses? He said he was a proper twat. And what did you say to that? I said, if we're going to be honest, you're a proper foul mouth twat. <laughs> well done, you. And she said it in a very dignified way, too. Ah, she gets that from you, Madeline. Oh, I don't think so. I gave up being dignified when I was 14 years old. Really? Why was that? It was a boy at school. He was trying to tease me, saying, Maddie, Maddie, oh, you are so dignified. I said, what do you mean by that? He said, your hair is so neat, and you always answer the teacher so politely. You're dignified like old people. I thought, well, we'll see about that. So after that, when my mother put my hair in braids around my head in the morning, I would walk out to go to school and undo it, letting it float like feathers around my face. And the teacher? I kept on being just as polite. That was important to me. I didn't like rude people then, and I still don't. The odd rude word doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> And the boy? Oh, him. I married him eventually. We came to England together. I still miss him. Of course you do. I need to go inside now, darling Jenny. Will you call Harry to help me? Thank you so much for inviting me to join you. Not at all, my dear. I always enjoy our little chats. Oh, that reminds me, your question. I will tell you my answer. It is this. I was always old. I realized that when Mishka said it when I was 14. I was born mm -hmm, oh, about 45 years old already. And I still am. <laughs> when I reached 45, I understood that I was at last the right age for me. It fitted me. So that is your answer. And here is Harry. Pass me my stick, darling. Sure, Nana. Here you are. Bye, Helen. See you later. Bye. So I was right. Sort of. But hang on. 45 isn't old. It's middle-aged. So that doesn't work. Oh, well, back to the drawing board, as they say. That was episode six, Saving Grounds, of Am I Old Yet? by Floyd Kennedy.
It was recorded, performed, and produced by me, Floyd Kennedy. The music is by Joan Melton. You can find more episodes of Am I Old Yet at am hyphen i hyphen old hyphen yet dot com and also on most podcast platforms. That was Floyd Kennedy on Meet the Writer for Make It Heard. Music was by Joan Melton and also Jack Myers.